Kind of hope you all had a great and safe week. So glad to be back in the studio. Yeah, I'm so happy to not be filming in a dining room this week. Yeah, things seem to be making progress on the COVID side of things. Did you see the new survey on remote learning? I did actually. In fact, recently a survey was sent out to the students of Winnicunit. The survey had a handful of questions based on remote learning and was looking for feedback. Out of the 431 students that submitted responses, 70.3% of students said a big struggle of remote learning was being on a screen for too long, and 57.3% that not being able to leave their homes and go to actual school was a problem for them. For the positive side of remote learning, many students said that engaging in things like turning in assignments, participating in Zoom calls, and scanning, scanning in homework were easy things for them. As time goes on and students get more used to online resources, and sites used by teachers, remote learning will become less difficult. Wow, it seems like a lot of students are struggling with remote learning. Maybe that's why so many people will sign the position to get back into school. Yeah, I don't think that anyone would have thought that COVID would affect the school year and fall sports this much. Yeah, I mean, just last week, Exeter had to forfeit due to COVID. Last Saturday, Exeter football was scheduled to travel to Winnicott to play in the quarterfinal game. This would have been only the fifth time since 1924 that this team would meet in the playoffs. Unfortunately, this did not happen due to an extra player testing positive for COVID-19 prior to the game. This led to the Blue Hawks having to forfeit the game, automatically moving the Warriors to the semifinal game against Goffstown. That game will be played this Saturday at 1 p.m. at Goffstown, and you can find the live stream link on the Winnicunit Twitter. I was really hoping for another Winnicunit versus Exeter game. I was too, but at least we got to watch the boys' soccer games last week. Yeah, their season was fun to keep up with, especially because they made it to the championship for the first time in Winnicunit history. It was nice that everyone could watch it, whether it was on the live stream or in person. Yeah, it was fun to watch the whole team. It definitely was a lot different than watching on the live stream, though, than being there. I actually think Riley and Ina just did a story on the team and how they did in playoffs. Let's roll it. Over the season, the boys' varsity soccer team has faced one big challenge in particular, that being COVID. Before the final decision of being able to have a season or not was made, many of the boys didn't know what to expect. When the call was made that the season was on, many were very excited, and this team in specific took that privilege to another level. The odd season made many different changes in their soccer schedule, causing late practices and fewer games. Although they faced these challenges, the team made it to the championship game this year with a final record of 11-2-3. This summer, um, we did a lot of we did some summer training. We were fortunate to do that. Um, I thought honestly, day by day, and it shifted back to whether or not we are playing or not playing. Um, you know, fortunately, we got the chance to play, um, and it's actually amazing that we're here. Uh, and gone so long uh, playing. I expected the season to, uh, I didn't even expect the season, but when I heard that there was a season, I thought at some point it would get cut short because with all the circumstances going on, and I did not think we'd make it this far, and I'm glad we did. Before playoffs, the team thought it would be best to make a few adjustments position-wise before the big games. Some things we did to make our team successful, our, uh, we, we played uh, five in the back, five players on defense, and we thought that um, it would just, just stacking the back would be easier for us and then um, relying on the counter attack, so yeah. We have a formation and we're kind of just clicking together. We have really good chemistry and I think that's why we've gone as far as we've gotten so far, so I'm excited. During this time, they became closer as a team. They put in extra time at practices and grew a lot while working together. This group of boys are all very close, which helps contribute to how well they work together on the field. 
Having good chemistry definitely helped them achieve their goal of making the championship this season. Um, towards the beginning of the season, since it was a uh, new team and a lot of players weren't really like close to each other, I would say no. But as the season went on, we uh, we progressed our bond and we're um, we're becoming more like a family now, especially at this point in the season. It's a true family. Um, the guys love being here. The guys understand. You know, we're fortunate to be here uh, with all the restrictions and everything. Um, and we've just grown as a group um, since since August um, and all the summer stuff. So it's been an amazing, amazing run with these guys. Uh, they're, they're a fantastic group. Along with team bonding comes key players to help with being successful. Some of these players consist of upperclassmen, but also underclassmen. This season's gone pretty good. Like some key players are like James because he's like really athletic. He he gets up for the headers on the corner kicks and stuff, and that's how we score a lot of our goals. Lucas is really it's like a really good anchor for our team. He holds it down in the center defensive mid spot, not in, not allowing the striker to do as much. And Noah Noah's been. Uh, doing really good this season. He's been showing out and playing like his heart out every game. Last Wednesday, the boys played in the semi-final game to determine whether or not they would make it to the championship. The game first ended as a tiebreaker, but went into double overtime, which also ended with a tie. The boys then went into sudden death penalty kicks. This was a very close game, but they took the win after Tanyan Zilkowski saved the PK shot, breaking the tie and putting Winnicunna in the lead. This led them to the final game this past Saturday. Unfortunately, the boys had a tough loss against Wyndham in the state finals with a final score of 3-0. Even though they lost this game, they made it very far in the season and even made school history by making it to states. They had a very successful season and created strong bonds that will carry on throughout the rest of the school year. For WHTV, this is Nina and Riley. Yeah, Wednesday's game was crazy. Double overtime and 12 penalty kicks. It was super fun to watch. Everyone so excited after the game. I hope our winter sports are like that. Hopefully we can have a season. In other states like Massachusetts, winter postseason has already been canceled. And other states like Illinois are already looking to cancel winter sports altogether. So far, all the winter sports have been approved from the NHIAA. And practices are set to start on December 14th. However, games wouldn't start until January 11th. Guidelines for these sports are still being decided and are yet to be determined. I'm really excited for the upcoming basketball season in particular. I wonder why. Anyway, I hope I can go to most of the winter sports games because I think I'm gonna work over the winter. Oh yeah, didn't you work at Hampton Beach over the summer? Yeah, I did. And so did a lot of Winnicunit students. I wonder what it was like with local businesses dealing with Corona. Well, you're in luck because Hannah and Tessa just did a story on it. This past summer, Businesses along the beach were affected by COVID and we decided to investigate how some of the businesses had to adapt and how COVID affected them. First, we decided to take a look at Cinnamon Rainbows, one of Hampton's small, locally owned businesses on North Beach. Cinnamon Rainbows was originally located in Massachusetts as a Cape Cod surf shop in 1980, but then in 1983, another shop was opened in Hampton where you'll find many locals shopping at. Cinnamon Rainbows is pretty popular and is one of the bigger surf shops around here where people can buy surfboards, bathing suits, and much more. When COVID came in with a bang, many of the businesses at the beach, such as Cinnamon Rainbows at the time, probably didn't have high hopes for a successful summer. We decided to talk to Dave Cropper, who is currently the owner of the surf shop, about how COVID affected his business and how they adapted to the new COVID guidelines. COVID was definitely, we've been in business for a long time and this was one of the biggest challenges we ever saw, having the beaches and the parking closed and having the shop closed. Having said that, we've been able to adapt. At first, we were closed with just doing curbside, and then we were able to open with masks and at limited capacity. Once the beach is opened back up, then we were able to, you know, get really, it got really busy. I mean, a lot of people wanted to be outside. I feel like we've adapted well. We figured out how to remain open and help customers. Put a lot more stuff online. Um, and gone from you know not doing any group le lessons or events to private lessons. So we've sort of been able to navigate our way around and make the most of it. Next, we took a look at KB's Bagels, which is located on North Beach. KB's was established in 1989 and was known as JB's. 
They serve bagels, coffee, smoothies, acai bowls, and more. We have to redo everything. Like before, we had to uh, let customers get their own coffee. Now we have to do it for them. Um, plexiglass up. We had to limit the amount of people coming in. It was really a very hard summer, um, mentally. I definitely was frustrated. Frustrated for sure, I think I would say, because talking with customers is something that I always take a lot of pride in. And when I can't communicate with them the same way as before, through no fault of anybody's, I think it makes it a lot more difficult and challenging. Main concern is staying open. I mean, it was, it was, it was, when it happened in the spring, it was touch and go. Um, I thought of closing in March. So I didn't know how long it was going to happen. Business really fell off. And once April came, things started getting a little better business wise. So we stayed open. We, it, it, it worked out okay. You know, not great, but uh, we didn't go backwards, which is, is important. Work is a lot different now. It's definitely changed a lot since COVID. We used to let people just come right in, order. So now they have to follow a line coming in, um, 10 people in line at a, at a time. Masks are a requirement. A lot of restaurants, some restaurants actually did it before COVID even started, but definitely the masks were wearing. Um, we have plexiglass at the register, which makes it actually very hard to communicate with customers because we have masks and then you have the plexiglass and then people also can't read menus because of glare. So. I think the communication piece at the register has definitely gotten more difficult. So it, it was difficult, but um, you know, it's getting better. Although the businesses at the beach had to make a lot of changes and adapt to the circumstances, the owners and employees all seem to have had a positive attitude through it all, and in terms of business, they definitely ended up with a lot of it. I heard that COVID cases are rising a lot recently, so Massachusetts and New Jersey have a curfew now for people and businesses. Because of the weather, outdoor seating options have become less and less available, so I wonder how this is going to affect restaurants. Yeah, fall definitely seems to be ending sooner this year with the recent snow we got, but this week's weather has been amazing. But you know what that means, right? What, Hannah? The fall play! Okay, okay Hannah, settle down. <laughs> this year's fall play, titled 10 Ways to Survive in a Quarantine, is going to be pretty different than any fall play Winnicunna has had before. It is going to be pre-recorded and put on YouTube, airing on December 4th and 5th so the audience can still enjoy as one collective group. Actors and tech crew alike have been wearing masks and practicing social distancing during rehearsals. They've been working very hard to put on a show given the circumstances. Be sure to check it out when it's released. OMG, I'm overjoyed. I'm so ecstatic. Yeah, this is your last time being able to see the school plays as a high schooler. I've seen a lot more plays than the average high schooler, you could say. Pack it up, fifth year. Pack it up, 5'2". Aren't you like 5'4"? So see you later when I cut it. Have a fun weekend.